Hey everyone, today we are working on assignment six and I'm on the file called Guy with the Hair because it's a guy who has some hair. Um, and we're gonna learn about selecting and masking today. So today I wanna go ahead and if I look at my layers panel, I'm gonna notice that I have two layers actually here. I've got uh, this top layer, layer zero, guy with the hair with the background. You can't see it because it's, it's a full uh, layer, which means it fills the entire workspace. Um, but if I turn it off, you can see what's below it. So I want to see what this guy looks like, but with the orange as the background. I don't want any of this blue or white or green. So I'm going to go ahead and select him and mask out the background. Let's see how we do that. Um, when I am in my tools, my fourth tool down, that's my object selection tool. And that's going to be a really important tool that you'll use a lot. Um, and you're going to notice something. When you select it, it's just this square with a little arrow on it. You have two options up here in mode, rectangle or lasso. So we've used this before on the uh, first selections lesson. I'm going to use the rectangle to click and drag around my guy all the way down, including his shirt um, and all his hair. I'm going to release it. And it's going to use um, tech to then sense the outlines of my guy. I got a pretty good selection. So now I can see my marching ants going all around the guy and I can see where my selection is. That's a pretty good selection. Um, the other thing I could have done, I'll hit Command D to get rid of it. I could have changed this to lasso mode. I'm still using object select. If I prefer manually to uh, control this myself, I could, you know, lasso around it if I wanted. I just got to get back to where I finished. Same thing, it would analyze it. Now I got the exact same selection, it analyzed it the same way. Um, and now that I've done that, I have this selection, I wanna go ahead and I wanna mask out uh, the background. Now if I just went ahead and I hit my mask icon and masked out the background, I've got some problems. It didn't work very well. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and Command Z. I don't wanna mask it yet. So with it still in my dancing ants, my marching ants sort of dotted line, I'm gonna go up to the top of my window and I'm gonna see where it says select and mask. And I'm now gonna enter select and mask. And that's gonna let me go ahead and refine my mask and clean it up a little bit. Over here, I've got my view mode. I'm gonna change it to overlay. That way I can see red shows what has not been selected and then my normal view is what is selected. So that's gonna let me analyze uh, my image a bit. So I'm gonna command plus a little bit. I'm gonna see some issues where I need to clean up my selection where it didn't do it perfectly. So I've got a couple ways that um, I can do that. The first thing is I've got my quick select brush. Now with my quick select brush, you'll see I've got um, my cursor, I can use my bracket keys on my keyboard. They're next to the P key. There's right and left bracket, and that'll control the size of my brush. So I can make it bigger or smaller using those keys. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in a bit, is I'm gonna go in, maybe not quite that much, and I'm gonna try to, now with my brush, quick select brush, I'm gonna make that a small brush, and I'm gonna hold down Option to deselect some of this, and I'm just gonna kind of paint in and let it analyze the space and clean that up. Still got that little gap right there. Now, if I look, if I change my view mode, I don't know if that's good. It's got this kind of weird blur right there. So that's one way to do it, but it's not always perfect. So we can clean it up other ways. I'm also gonna use this by holding down my shift key and I'm going to go in and run it over the glasses. So it kind of finishes the glasses up and cleans those up a little bit. So I can look around and see where it might have missed selection that I needed to clean it up, especially along the profile. The other thing I can do, um, I can use a regular brush. A regular brush, this is gonna show me the exact edge. So if I held down option, I could, oops, I could paint in, but you can see how it's gonna follow the exact edge of my brush. I don't wanna do that. But down here, I might wanna go in and I'm going to hold shift, I might want to paint along that edge to get rid of that blurry part so it's not overlapping the mouth. And that's going to get it right there. And again, if I go to my view mode to see black on white, now it looks pretty much perfect. So I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to analyze what needs done. In fact, I could analyze right in here this little gap in the glasses right here. I could make this a really tiny brush with my bracket key. Just hold down Option to take away from my selection and I could paint that little gap in and this little gap right here in. And now if I go to my view mode, 
you see that little gap right there. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. Let's command zero to go out. So I've got a pretty decent selection. I'm pretty happy with it, except for one place. Oop, it's freezing up. Let's see if it agrees with me quickly. My hair is not good. I really need to help this guy out with the hair. So I'm gonna go over here to my tool panel and I'm gonna choose the second brush. This is my refined edge brush. Um, and I can get to it with keyboard shortcut R um, if I want to, but you can see how it's a brush with some hair or fire around it. This is gonna let me analyze fuzzy edges. So it's great for the edge of hair or um, fur on a dog or smoke or something very wispy that doesn't have a hard edge. Now you'll notice um, if I go up and I zoom in a bit, what I can do, and again, I can use my bracket keys to make it bigger or smaller. I'm not gonna make it too big, but if I go in and I just kind of paint over the edge where I see those white gaps and all the way to the edge of the hair and I follow along the contour of the hair, it's gonna go in and it's gonna analyze my edge really, really well. So I'm gonna go in, I'm just painting kind of up and down along the contour edge of the hair and it's analyzing and it's filling in those gaps. Now I'm not going all the way into the hair. If I were to go into here, I would get a huge mess and that would really, see how then it made a huge problem. We got red in there. I don't want that, so I'm gonna Command Z because obviously that was bad. Now let's look and look in our view mode at what this is doing. If I go into black and white, Look at the difference between how my selection was before and how it is now where I ran my refine edge brush. Again, I can just keep going and kind of brushing in and you can see how it cleans up that edge and makes it better. Also, I'm only brushing a little bit. Like I said before, if I were to go in and just kind of go over all this, it might look like you're doing good stuff, but now I have weird gaps in the head. Um, so it would be see-through in the head. Not good at all. So I'm going to command Z to get rid of this. I prefer to be on my overlay mode. That way I can see what I'm doing. Um, I can go in and I can just brush because you can see I missed this that I didn't see with black and white. I can get into here a little bit. I can get down in as far as I need to go to the tips of the hair all the way down to the bottom of those gaps. But as I go through, that's really gonna clean up. Oops, I still missed this little part right there. So I'm just gonna go around the edge of the head where there's hair and even some of these little stray hairs. Here it's just a little bit fuzzy. And I'm good. I'm even gonna go right here. I'm gonna make this a little smaller with my bracket key. I'm gonna do right there, his little eyebrow. But man, if I go to my view mode, look how good this selection is now. Every hair, um, selected every little wispy uh, edge that's really nice I did notice this little mistake earlier so I'm gonna go back into my overlay I'm gonna grab my manual brush I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger with my bracket key I'm just going to paint in that bit of the selection because I don't want that red there okay I'm feeling pretty good I'm gonna go all the way around just to kind of analyze it Oops, see right there and I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape. So now that I've analyzed it and I've gotten my selection pretty much perfect, it's right on the edge. And I can check with my marching ants. I can check on black mode, white mode. I really like the silhouette black on white mode. That just helps me kind of really check my edges. Uh, but I've got it nicely done. Then the next thing I need to do is I just need to go in and mess with my sliders. So I can refine it a little bit. If I hit smooth, let's go into my black and white mode so you can see what this is doing. Um, I can smooth my selection a bit. Notice how it makes this all kind of blobby. For this case, I don't think I really want to smooth it. So I'm going to leave it on zero. Sometimes I like to put this on like one. Um, and you can do that and see if it smooths it a little bit. And that might just get rid of some of the jaggedness. I also like to feather it slightly. And again, feather just kind of blurs the edge. Now, obviously, that's too blurry. Seven pixels, right? Even two, even 0.6 pixels is a little blurry. So I like my sharp edges here. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at zero. And then for shift edge, I can move this. And actually for this one, I'm gonna put this on overlay. So if this were at zero, you can see where the edge of the selection is. So let's look right here where his nose and mouth are. And if I shift the edge, that's just moving the edge of my selection more in. I can actually move it too far. And you can see now it's overlapping him or I can go far out, but now I get this weird halo. So zero is pretty good, but I might shift it in just a tiny bit. I'm gonna go about negative, like 
a negative five. How about that? And that just moves my selection in slightly to get rid of this edge that I'm seeing. Um, and now the last thing I'm going to do is go to my output settings and I need to hit the drop down arrow. I need to send this somewhere. So right now, if I said output to selection, um, that refined my selection, but that doesn't give me what I need. What I really want to do is I want to output to a layer mask. So that's what you're going to choose. Output to layer mask. And that's going to automatically now mask out the background, but keep my guy. So I'm going to output it to the layer mask. I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see, if you look in your layers, how there's a mask right here. Black shows what's covered up in the layer. That would be all the background. And white indicates what's still showing, my guy. So now he's here on my magazine background. So the cool thing is you have this chain link. So the mask is linked to the object. So I can select him. I can move him around. And the mask moves with him. So you can move him. Now, if I had unlinked it, now my mask is separate from him, which, you know, is not good. You, maybe you want that for a reason. I don't know why you would, but maybe you do. I don't know. That's kind of a cool piece of art. But anyways, uh, undo and link it back up. Because if it's linked, I can move him around. I can even do a transformation. I can Command-T and rotate my guy around. Ooh, he's having a great day. Um, again, I'm not going to do any of that. Go back to where he was. Put him back where he needs to be. Return to apply my transformation. But now I've got everything I need. So he's sit there. He's masked out. Um, I can turn my mask off if I ever need to uh, disable it for a quick minute and see, you know, kind of my background again. Right click to enable my layer mask. Um, and I've made a really nice refined mask that looks really, really good no matter what background I put underneath him. I hope that made sense. Once you're done, you can go ahead and save your work um, and move on to the next lesson.